Hi everyone, my name is Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and today we're going to give a brief introduction to recursion. So in today's lesson, we're going to be using the recursion.cpp file, and we're going to be going over an implementation of factorial and finding the nth digit of the Fibonacci sequence. So starting off, what is recursion? So we, we define recursion recursive functions in C++ and in every other programming language, I'm pretty sure, as a function that simply calls itself. So you may be wondering, you know, why would I ever want to do this? Now, there are some problems that naturally lend themselves to being described in certain ways. So it's maybe easy to map a problem to a recursive function. Oftentimes you can do it with, you know, fewer lines of code because you break you're really breaking down a problem when you do a recursive function into you know a little kernel that's a base case and then every other case which is part of this recursive call so what actually happens in a recursive function so let's take factorial for example in factorial say five factorial we're calculating five times four times three times two times one so our answer should be 120. now in this case we will end up generating all these calls to factorial. So the main function will say call factorial with int n equals five. And then we'll end up keeping call, we'll end up, uh, we'll keep calling factorial, multiplying it by whatever the number is, but we'll keep calling it with the preceding, uh, the preceding or the preceding digit, uh, right? So if we do, say five factorial in the first iteration when we first call the function int n is equal to five and then we call factorial for four because and we multiply that by n because when we're at the first iteration we have five and we now want to know what is four times three times two times one or the rest of the problem and we keep doing that and we keep doing that and we keep building on this thing called the call stack so that's just kind of a record of all the function calls we've had so we end up doing we end up getting a call stack that will go you know a call for int n is equal to five four three two till we get to one and when we get to one we we do our first return that will start this chain of you know, zipping back up through all the other calls in that call stack. So one will return to the factorial call for two. Uh, the answer of one times two will return to the factorial call for three. The return for three times two times one will return for the factorial call for four. And then finally four will return for the factorial call of, uh, and four for four times three times two times one and we end up back at our you know top of the call stack for the first function call for five times factorial of four and so we should get the correct answer uh, now second problem we'll look at is another is another typical example that you know kind of lends itself to describing via recursion you can certainly imagine doing this with you know just a regular loop uh, but uh, it's it's good to get some practice you know trying to map problems in different ways so like we said we're going to be having we're, we really have two things base cases and then our recursive calls so in this case we have two base cases and the reason why we have that is because uh, the the digit of a Fibon of the Fibonacci sequence which if you're unfamiliar goes one one two three five eight and so on and the way that it works is you add two preceding digits to get the third so you add the first and second digit to get the third then you add the second and third digit to get the fourth and then you add the uh, third and fourth digit to get the fifth so in this case we're going to be looking for the case of n equals five so the fifth digit so we should get five now let's see how that maps out to a recursive function. In this case, like we said, we have two base cases for n equals zero and n equals one. And that's because, like we said, we have to look back um, a minimum two places. So for the case of n is equal to two, 
we have to look back at zero, right? Uh, because we'll end up calling uh, n minus two. Now you may be asking, well, what about n minus one? Will I still get that? Well, no, because we have another base case for that. So uh, we won't even call this Fibonacci of n minus two. We'll just immediately hit one of the, the other base case. So let's kind of work back with a pretty easy example and see how this works. So let's go ahead and write our Fibonacci sequence up to the fifth digit. So one, one, two, three, five. Let's zoom in one more just to kind of see. So we start out as we kind of already saw at the top, right? So we at the top of the problem. So we want the fifth digit. Now this says, okay, so in order to get the fifth digit, I first need to know what these two numbers are because these two numbers are going to add up and give me the fifth digit. So we make two calls. We call Fibonacci n minus two and n minus one. So if n is equal to five, n minus one will be equal to four, and n minus, uh, or sorry, n minus one will be equal to four, and then n minus two will be equal to three. Now, both of those calls will then in turn go back and say, okay, so, you know, the guy above me that just called me, he wanted the fifth digit, but you know, I need what the fourth digit is. And then the other guy goes, I need what the third digit is. So what the other two guys do is, so for the case of n is equal to four now, he says, okay, in order to get the fourth digit, I need the third and the second digit. And then the other guy, the guy who's now n is equal to three, he says, I need, for three, I need what the second and the first digit is. Uh, okay, and then they both go back down. So, so these two, so for the three and two, or so we already went over three, but for two and one, what happens? So two comes around and says, okay, well I need what the first digit is and the zeroth digit. Um, so he calls both of those, those both hit base cases, right? So two minus two will be zero, and then two minus one will be one. So they hit these both, two, two both base cases, uh, both, oh, sorry, both of these two base cases. And then the one that's already one, right here, when this guy calls, uh, when he gets called Fibonacci, so Fibonacci of one, he immediately hits a base case. And just like the other example, all the calls and returns wrap back up until we get here back to the original top of the call stack of n is equal to five. Fibonacci of n minus two returns two. Fibonacci of n minus one returns three. We calculate two plus three, we get five. All right, kind of a long-winded explanation, but it's important that we go over these details. So our main function that we're going to call this from, so, We'll just call it using five for n factorial and five for n Fibonacci. We'll call these two functions and store the result in result factorial and result Fibonacci. And then we'll print out what five factorial is and what the nth digit or the fifth digit in this case of Fibonacci is. We'll save it. We'll go ahead and compile. So we'll use G plus plus again. Uh, we'll call it on recursion. Input recursion C++ is our source. No compile errors. There's our green executable. And we'll run. And looks like we got the right answer this time, right? So 5 factorial is equal to 120. The nth digit of Fibonacci is 5. All right, so that's going to wrap it up for a brief introduction, uh, uh, introduction to recursion, as always. All of this code is available on the GitHub page at github.com slash coffee before arch. There are links in the C++ crash course repository for uh, all the videos that have been done. They go straight to YouTube, the concepts covered in those videos, and then direct links to the files used in those videos. So in this case, by the time this video is up, we will have 
links to recursion.cpp on that front page. As always, I'm Nick from Coffee Before Arch, and I hope you have a nice day.